Welcome everyone to a very special virtual recorded edition of the e-commerce swipe file. In this episode, we are being joined by Brett Burns from Shopify Plus and Eric Van Holtz, the founder and CEO of Beardbrand. And why is this episode special? It's because we're talking about something that's very near and dear to all of us at Gorgeous, which is automation. And more specifically, Shopify Flows a very easy way for any Shopify Plus uh, business or merchant on Shopify Plus to automate a lot of those menial tasks. And in Gorgeous, it could be automating if you get a one-star review or a five-star review to open up a ticket, or maybe you get a fraudulent order to automatically get back to your customers sooner. But as powerful as Shopify flows are, people just aren't talking about it nearly enough for the amount of power and value it can bring to your store. So I'm gonna pass it over to Brett to just explain to everyone what Shopify flows are and really why merchants should be using them. Yeah, thanks Lucas. I mean, Shopify flow is a plus exclusive app centered around reclaiming your time and automating a bunch of tasks that you shouldn't have to spend time doing. Um, it's basically like if this mm -hmm. then that, if you used to use that before, I don't know, I used to use that tool. So basically it's a trigger, condition, and action. So you can set the app to uh, trigger based on a bunch of different actions. You set your conditions and then you trigger an action like um, customer tags, canceling fraudulent orders like you say, or uh, even external requests like sending it to a spreadsheet, sending a Slack message, um, sending an email, and you can also even use a custom connector like you have with Gorgeous. Awesome. And Eric, how are you using some Shopify flows over at your brand? Yeah, I think we, we use it in a similar way to a lot of the other users on Shopify. We automatically cancel any high risk uh, orders that come in. So, um, I don't know, is that a Shopify uh, high risk? Does Shopify do that? Or is it one of our uh, plugins that tags things as high risk? Um, but regardless, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's really nice uh, to be able to have that, and you know, we don't we don't have to spend any time looking into the high risk ones. And then um, we'll also use it um, where I think is a little bit unique for us compared to other people is with our alliance membership. And alliance is our private uh, forums or communities, and we will tag. Uh, customers if they've ordered from us three times that they're eligible for alliance and then also tag them as alliance members as well um, in Shopify so we'll be able to, to, to have that data and I think that's just such a great example of using flows to really enhance lifetime customer value which everyone talks about doing but there are very few really unique and creative examples other than just, oh yeah, we've got a discount code or we offer subscriptions. I think that uh, Alliance, and maybe after I order some, uh, we order some beard brand products for the Shopify team as well. Thank you for, for agreeing to do this episode. Hey. Maybe uh, you'll let me, let me in. Brett, what are some other examples that you've seen using Shopify flows to really increase loyalty and retention throughout the, the, the customer journey? Yeah, there's lots of ways, like based on a lot of different, um, triggers and conditions. So I think some of the bigger ones are like tagging customers as VIPs. Mm -hmm. So you could do, you could track a customer lifetime spend. So if order comes in and the customer who created that order has spent over $500 on your store or has, you can even do order count. So maybe it's, mm -hmm. has placed over 10 orders. If that's con considered a VIP for you and your business, then you can tag those customers as gold, silver, bronze, and you can start automating that with a lot of your email marketing providers or send it directly to your ESP. Um, and you can actually input, those tags will pull into Gorgeous. So you're gonna, your customer service reps can actually see what level that customer tag is and if they're looking at the order specific they can see the order tags it's associated to um that's kind of my favorite one for for loyalty and rewards exactly um and it's funny we talked about something very similar on another episode with uh john roman from battle box and carnivore club and their formula is super easy it's one of those aha moments of why did not why didn't i think of that and what they do for their threshold is their average customer value and they bump it up by like 10 bucks. And if you're at that level or higher, then you're a VIP and same thing for the order count. And that's who they really take care of. And their rules for customer support is if you're a VIP, pretty much you get what you want. It's if the order's messed up, just send a replacement. If something's wrong, send a replacement or, or do, do a refund, things, things like that. 
No, I, like, I like that idea of um, prioritizing uh, tickets based on their status as well. So uh, we treat all customers the same in terms of returns, but the reality is replying to customers is a, a scarce resource. So if we're able to sort them by um, really like loyalty, then um, I think they would appreciate that. So, man, I'm stealing that tip. Right oh. Now. Oh, absolutely. That's the whole point of uh, point of the show. Find one tactical takeaway that you can uh, swipe for for your own store. So it's a, a really powerful way that you can increase your loyalty and customer retention using Shopify flows. Eric, when it comes to building a community, just to go a little bit off off topic, what are some tactics that you've really done to keep that that engaged, whether or not through Shopify flows, but really just to have an engaging form in a community because it, it almost feels like forms are are a dying breed where people are in Facebook groups or WhatsApp chats. Yeah, I don't think every brand or every e-commerce website should be thinking about building like a, a physical uh, community or an online community. There is a lot of work. You have to moderate it. You have to encourage conversations. Yeah. Um, it does get to the point where it becomes sustainable and the community kind of self-moderates and then you just have to kick out the bad players. But generally, if, if someone's buying from Beard Brand, they're they, they have a similar mindset, so they end up being um, pretty pretty cool people. Um, so the, the community for us is, is really important. Now, we uh, use forum software called um, Discord, Discourse, Discourse. And uh, we, we did that because we didn't want to build on Facebook's um, island, right? Because Facebook can always change the rules. Whereas by having our own forums, we're in a little more control and control of how it looks. It's a lot harder to grow though, because people have to create a new account. They have to log into the forums. They have to learn how discourse works. Whereas a lot of people are familiar with, with uh, Facebook already and are in Facebook groups. But I just, I imagine that Facebook's going to start neutering uh, Facebook groups one of these days and making you pay to the post or to see those posts. Uh, in front of your customers. So it's nice for us to, to kind of be independent of that, even if it is a little harder. Absolutely. Uh, and now to just bring it back full circle, Brett, we've talked about Shopify flows for uh, for risk orders and orders that we don't want to fulfill. We've talked about it for uh, for bad customers. We talked about it for great customers. Going beyond sort of both extremes, what are some of the best examples that other Shopify Plus merchants should really start using Shopify flows for. Maybe it's going a little bit deeper into into those automations. Maybe it's just something really obvious that you just want to scream or buy a billboard and put on saying, hey, do this for your Shopify flows. What's what's your big takeaway for, for the Shopify Plus merchants listening of how they can get, get even more out of Shopify flows? It's a great, great question. My favorite ones are the loyalty ones and creating that VIP customers that the program that we talked about earlier, but the been the biggest categories that people leverage flow for is customer segmentation, which we touched on a little bit, risk management, which is the whole purpose of this one, and then inventory management, merchandising on order management as well. Um, I think the biggest thing is that I see untapped is that we have in the flow app for Shopify plus merchants, an entire catalog of of pre-made flows you can just simply plug and play and download um, people are somewhat intimidated if they've never downloaded it before they're not sure how easy it is to actually create a flow that you literally just jump in it's like a few button clicks and, and you're activated a, a risk management flow so you can cancel high risk orders or flag them as fraudulent so your customer service team has that right in their face when they're managing a ticket and gorgeous so um, i think the biggest inhibitor is people just not understanding how powerful it can be it saves a, a bunch of time. I mean, some of the favorite, the, the best ones are with that VIP program. One of my favorite ones I saw one of my accounts do in, in LA is they have a pretty noteworthy founder, somewhat like yourself, Eric. So they do a, when it's a high tier <laughs> VIP customer, right? They, the, they send a DM to the customer service team and email to their warehouse directly through Flow and they trigger um, a handwritten response and a note from the founder themselves and they put it in the package. Uh, so it's like a really extra added personal touch that is kind of automated on the back burner by Flow and you can really like create some grassroots like customers and, and advocates that way, like those personal touches. So there's so many different ways to use it, like it's if this then that, you, you kind of 
can't think Absolutely. of the amount of things you could do with it but those or even the automations ones. on that apple's rolling out now on iphone there are so many simple ones and as we wrap it up just your shirt really puts it more more eloquently that than i can but will technology <laughs> human creativity and the answer is absolutely because you're not doing those menial tasks of well you know what this looks like it could be suspicious it's automatically being flagged so you have time for those more creative approaches of, of having the founder reach out and especially for mid-sized businesses where the founder is really doing everything from uh in some cases fulfilling orders to customer support to writing the creative on their ads it opens up more time to really get those creative juices flowing and work on the part of the, your business which is which is fun and i know that eric that's something that you're really passionate about is uh you mentioned this at clayo boston but why are we doing it if we're not having fun right we can do all kinds of things but like i think everyone who starts a business and is an entrepreneurial is a bit of a uh, a cowboy or a cowgirl and wants to do it their way and shoot from the hip a little bit. So why not allow yourself more time to do that, to do all the, that fun shit that you want to do, which is why you started a business and be a little bit of uh, unleash your inner John Wayne. Absolutely. I mean, it's, um, talk about this a lot, but it's the journey, you know, and, and uh, especially if you can build a business that's profitable or, or grows up to a, a couple million dollars in revenue, that, that's going to give you the really the, the kind of life that you can, do anything you want in, in life you'll have a roof over your head you'll be able to travel the world and as long as you get those kind of like grinds off your plate and i, I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs probably struggle with the grind but to a certain degree they're a little more free-spirited a little more ideas people i'm not i don't want to journalize everyone but but a lot of kind of like the visionary type of entrepreneur is going to be that way so the more time that uh, founders are spent in that visionary mode the more they're going to be able to bring value to their business and kind of allow the business to to, to, to literally like do things like this podcast learn new things and then take that knowledge and, and take it into um the team for the team to be able to execute or, or for your coworkers to be able to execute so uh, man i mean automation of course happens on shopify but we do a fair amount on gorgeous as well uh, and it's kind of like a one-two punch between the, the two softwares. Awesome. Well, I think that that's the, the perfect note to wrap it up. Brett, Eric, where can people find you? What are you, what are you uh, working on? I know that uh, obviously as we're recording this, there's not too, too much travel or, or events going on. So, but uh, where can people find you and get in, uh, get in touch and buy your products? Yeah, so um, um, I'm Eric Van Holtz, founder of Beard Brand. Uh, if you Google Eric Van Holtz, I'm the only one, uh, which will be bad if I ever get a DUI or something, but so far I'm pretty good with that. Um, I'm, I'm really active on Twitter. I love Twitter. Twitter's got a great uh, direct-to-consumer uh, community, a great Shopify community. And then, of course, uh, if you want to see what the Beard Brand is, experience is like, how we treat our customers and how we deliver our products, Head over to beardbrand.com and do yourself a favor. Buy something, buy our utility bar, utility bomb. Doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl, you'll be able to use it. And uh, yeah, I would greatly appreciate that. That'd be awesome. Nice. And I'm Brett Burns. If you Google me, you're going to get the hockey player, Brent Burns. So don't even try. But uh, <laughs> yeah, besides being a merchant success manager at Shopify, I've been here for three years and absolutely love my work. I'm also an entrepreneur as well. Um, I have a creative studio and creative agency called Sabbath Studios. You can reach us at sabbath-studios.com. Um, that's besides the point. Visit, you can reach me at, uh, at Shopify if you're one of my merchants, but um, I won't give out my personal email at Shopify yet, but uh, yeah, no. Hit, hit me up, I'll tell you it. <laughs> just yeah. hit up well, Eric, just DM well, him and uh, he'll give it out. Follow Eric on Twitter. He's gonna be tweeting out Brett's personal information uh, no kind words only, only support issues, only uh, problems, fires that you want put out. Brett will take care of that for fun invites. Call me and Eric. And to be yes. fair, I have I have sent my fair share of uh, bitching to Brett. So he, he knows that. Comes in from all walks of life. <laughs> awesome. Part of it. I'm here for it. Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Check out Shopify Plus and some flows for your store. And of course, check out Beard Brand, unless you're anti-personal hygiene, in which case, maybe look into some personal hygiene first and then some Beard Brand products.